Welcome to another immigration art video. My name is Art Saratelli. We provide a full range of immigration law services. So if you've got an immigration question, we've got answers. Feel free to use the contact information you'll see in this video and give us a call or send us an email or reach out to us on Facebook. Today's video deals with the E-1 Treaty Trader and the E-2 Treaty Investor Work Visa Categories. These are non-immigrant work visas and they're another choice available instead of the H-1B that is subject to the cap, the quota. It's an alternative to the H-1B that's exempt from the quota the cap exempt H-1B, it's an alternative to the R-1 religious worker, it's an alternative to the G visa, and all the other types of non-immigrant work categories. This is just another choice. It is not, and this is important, it's not an EB-5 investment green card. An EB-5 investment green card is what they call the million dollar or the half million dollar green card. E-1 and E-2 are the non-immigrant categories we'll discuss in this video. Non-immigrant, non-immigrant, non-green card work category they are not the million dollar, half million dollar green cards, the EB-5s. That's a whole nother topic, the EB-5 for a whole nother day. What's the difference between an E-1 treaty trader company and an E-2 treaty investor company. Well, first of all, an E2 treaty, treaty, E1 treaty. The word treaty is in there. So the first thing you need to know, step one, is to determine if your country has a treaty with America which creates the visa category for people of your country. So the next question should be, where do I find this list? Where is this list of treaty countries? And the answer is at the URL I will post next. Here are some of the countries on the list. Right off the bat, I got to tell you, uh, forgive me, India and mainland China do not have e-visa treaties with the United States. But here's some countries that do. We've got, and I'm, re I'm reading right off the website, Albania, Australia, uh, Azerbaijan, Belgium, Cameroon, Canada, Taiwan, China. They list it as China, but they say it's really Taiwan. Um, Colombia, Costa Rica, Egypt, Estonia, France, Germany, Greece, Iran, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Jordan, Korea, Liberia, Macedonia, Mexico, Moldova, Philippines, Poland, Slovenia, Spain, Thailand, Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the Ukraine. So that's a sample. The list is bigger. Take a look. If your country is on this list, that's step number one. Okay, step number two. What the heck is an E-1 trader versus an E-2 investment organization or company? E-1 trader is just simply a company that's involved in import or export or both between America and the home country that has a treaty with the United States. So using Korea as an example, if you're a South Korean owned company in America and you are, are engaged primarily in moving goods from Korea to America 
or from America to Korea, or a little bit of both, then you're an E1. Every other, every other company in America that's owned by a company or a person from a treaty country, every other company is an investment company. So every other company is E2 investor, E2 investment company, rather than the E1 trader. Okay, now step three. Step three, what are the requirements to get an E1 visa for you, the international worker? And we'll use Korea again as an example. So I'm reading it right off the internet. For the E-1 treaty trader, you've got to prove six things. Number one, the applicant must be a national of a treaty country. So if you're from South Korea and you get a job offer from a South Korean import-export company, bingo, that's number one. Number two, the trading firm for which the applicant is coming to the United States must have, must have the nationality of the treaty country. You get a job offer from a South Korean trading company. You personally are South Korean. You wake up every day, you're alive, and you're South Korean, and you get a job offer from a South Korean import-export company. Boom! Three, the international trade must be, quote, substantial in the sense that there is a sizable and continuous volume of trade between America and the treaty country. Number four, the trade must be principally between the United States and the treaty country, and that means principally between, that means that more than 50%, 51% of all the trade of the company in America, 51% of all that trade has to be between America and South Korea. That's it. That's it. 51% of what? It could be in, I've used sales volume, meaning sales dollars. 51% of all the sales dollars are rung up between America and South Korea. That's fine. It could be 51% of the units of inventory traded back and forth. 51%. Continuous and substantial. Sizable. Number five. Trade. What's trade? What's the definition of trade? Trade simply means the international exchange of goods, services, and technology. Goods, services, or technology crossing borders. And number six, the last one, the applicant, that's you, the e-visa worker, you, must be employed in a supervisory or executive capacity or you must possess highly specialized skills essential to the efficient and successful operation of the commercial business enterprise. The person with just ordinary skills like a secretary, no offense to secretaries, but ordinary everyday workers, the guy who works the photocopy machine, the guy who runs the postage meter, those people, they are not eligible for an E-1 visa but a quality control supervisor if you're importing kimchi you've got to make sure that the food that you're bringing over better meet the federal food and drug administration standards for food products in america you're the quality you're the quality control manager you are a skilled worker that ca that counts that qualifies What are the requirements? And we'll use Korea again as an example.
what is the requirement list to qualify for an E2 worker. Let's take a look again, right off the internet. Number one, the investor, meaning, meaning the person who owns or the corporation who owns the American company. The owner of the American company must be a national of the treaty country. So there again, Samsung, uh, LG, Two, the investment either either by Samsung or LG in the United States, the investment must be substantial. What are you talking about? If Samsung has a company office in America, of course the investment is going to be big, huge. There's some other kind of company in America besides a multinational. Other kind of company is entrepreneurial. You, your mom, your dad, you, your friends, you, another relative back in Korea, you guys can start your own company and you can qualify for the E visa because you start a business that's relatively low cost in comparison to Samsung and you invest a lot of money in terms of the overall investment. This investment must be substantial in, 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 in order to ensure the successful operation of the business enterprise in the United States. The percentage investment required for a low-cost business is generally higher and the percentage of investment required for a high-cost enterprise is generally lower. What does that mean? Eh, it's in the regulation. I'll explain that. The next requirement, the investment must be in a real operating commercial enterprise. Okay, the investment must be in an operating enterprise that you either buy an ongoing business, or if you're starting a business, then you need to follow the corporate formalities. You would need a separate corporate entity, a company, an LLC, or an incorporated entity, a tax ID number, a bank account. You would need a lease agreement. You'd have to have commercial space. Don't do something out of your kitchen. And you should have, if it's a startup, you should have a business plan. You should know how much money you're going to make in the first years. You should ha have an idea of how many people you're going to hire. The next requirement, are you ready? The investment may not be marginal. And all that means is the investment, the company, must generate enough money not just simply to pay you if it's a small startup or an entrepreneurial venture. If it's um, Samsung, obviously, obviously, they're making way more money than they're paying you. So Samsung and other multinationals, fine. This one's easy. If it's a smaller company, a startup company, it's got to make enough money to pay you, to pay other people, to pay suppliers, contractors, and it should make enough to have money left over. The next one, the investor, either, again, Samsung, the investor from South Korea opening up a Samsung office in America, Samsung, or you, or your mom, or your dad, or you and your friends, or you and your uncle, you, if you're the investors, you must invest money that you control, that is yours, and the money must be at risk. And at risk means that the investment, if it goes bad and the business goes south and it doesn't survive, you lose your investment. You do not, you cannot borrow money that is secured by the assets of the business because the government says, whoa, if you borrow money and don't pay it back, and the borrower, you, can just walk away, and the lender can just simply take the assets of the business 
in repayment of the loan sub sub substantially, then, then you've got nothing at risk. So if you borrow money, you've got to have it as an unsecured IOU, meaning the entity from which you borrow the money can only get repaid if you don't pay back the money. They can only get repaid by going to court, suing you, and collecting a judgment from the court against you, and then you have to oh, sell your house sell all the things you own to pay back the money you owe. That is an investment that's at risk. Just cash, taking cash out of your pocket and investing that, that's at risk. Um, if someone gives you a gift and it's formally documented as a gift and you control it, it's yours, and you put the gift into the business, that's at risk. The last requirement is simply that the investor, if it's a small company, must be coming to the United States solely to develop, solely, only to develop and direct the enterprise. If you're not the investor, you're an employee, well, then you must be employed in a supervisory, executive, or have some other skill, specialized skill, that will advance the forward progress of the business enterprise. And that's, again, that's very similar to the E1. In summary, the E1 Treaty Trader Import-Export and E2 Treaty Investor, which is any other kind of company in America that's not import-export. These are good opportunities for people who wanted an H-1B and perhaps didn't get one, people who are looking for other alternatives, perhaps entrepreneurial type individuals. If you are interested in working for a multinational, this is a good opportunity, the E-1 E2. If you're South Korean and send your resume to a South Korean owned company in the United States and you get a job offer, you're going to get an E visa.